Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. I'm going to be going over a nice highlight of the full Roots of War gameplay that we did in TM. This was the first actual proper event that the TNTA Alliance had to do since all the other alliances, if you've checked them out during the live streams, were a little bit easier. They had like 22 games to 7, but we've got a full 30 versus 30. So stay tuned for this drama-filled full highlights of the Roots of War. Hello everyone, so yes, welcome to today's video. We're gonna be going over a nice highlight reel so you don't have to go through the full hour gameplay, but for all those that did want it, it is gonna be the second upload for today's channel. So if you do wanna watch the full one hour gameplay and see it all the way through, you're gonna be able to do that. So just stick around for later on and hit the subscribe button so you know when that video goes up live. So with all that said, we're gonna showcase the beginning of the area and this is what was the major problem for us. So during the start of the Roots of War, and this was live streamed while we were doing this, we wasn't able to actually join the game mode. So you can see here, it kept saying server maintenance progress. We even, as you see now, close the game down to then relaunch the game to see, okay, if there was a server maintenance, maybe it's just, I need an update and check if that update was required. But you can see there's no update needed. So it loads us back in. So I'm like, okay, maybe it's just a bug. We're gonna go and try and join again, but you'll notice this is the same issue. And this issue, if you watch the full highlights video, lasts between, I think, three to five minutes, which is massive, because we've lost all of our preparation phase. We've lost, obviously, the first couple of minutes in combat. So we do lose a lot of the beginning structures, right? So we have to come back from this. So you can see it says server maintenance in progress, and this is what, was happening a lot of players were suffering from this as you can see from the roots of war on day one so this is just the day one play of it so hopefully this week's roots of war goes a little bit more smoother so when we go back in and you click go you can see we still cannot join and you can see how long already this video has been in the intro and that's again just in real time how long it's been so i'm going to skip forward and let's go into when we do eventually get into the game so welcome back we finally got to enter and we did have a game plan but you can see already now on the timer easily five minutes gone already in the game mode so what we can see is already the enemy already have one of the hall of natures so what our initial game plan was when we started this game mode was trying to capture these holes on the outer skirts and then in the center as fast as possible because those buildings generate the most points for your alliance. So you're going to see us starting to capture the buildings as you can imagine and our game plan kind of going into it but, but, but you've got to think we are behind in time we have not got all our players on still we're trying to get everyone in you can see we still slowly getting them in player by player so we're trying to work with what we've got and another little bit of overview for you guys here everyone you're watching playing here is a t4 player we're not a t5 alliance in this uh, team all of us are t4 players and you'll notice that is a major factor in this Roots of War later down the line. So we are against, when we look into it later on, an alliance called EIS, which is a really cool name um, when we get to showcase that later on. But here's the opening. So you can see as now we've got our tree of courage and a tree of healing, meaning we can get our extra attack and defense buff, health buff, and elixir production started which is very important, right? So now you can see we're trying to gain some sort of control on the map. We've got tr units here in the Hall of Nature, some in the center, and you can see we've even got the Hall of Nature on the left side. So here I'm going to start using just uh, my marches. I've already got my cavalry out doing its thing, which is really cool. Um, so we're gonna try and contest now for the middle. So you can see here the blue team is ahead at the moment, they've got the most amount of score at the moment through their score per minute. And obviously having that six minute advantage is 
massive when it comes into it. But you're going to start seeing some of that obviously sway into our favor very soon, right? And, and this is the power of caption objectives. So the whole purpose of this game mode, guys, and this is one lesson we learn from this one, is to try and keep hold and capture of all of these buildings. If you do have a dedicated team and you're trying to be a top top alliance in this game mode where potentially in the future if there's in a league like the Osiris League and Rise of Kingdoms you're gonna need dedicated garrison players as well as players who are going to be fielding because you need at least two of these holes captured at all times and then you might fight for a third one to gain an actual score advantage in the long run while your field presence conquers and hopefully captures those life stones for you so there's a load of little different in-depth strategies i think that's going to be involved but you're going to see here us doing our first little major attack and seeing what we're able to swipe from the enemy but right now you can see we have more score per minute 370 per minute and our buildings have been captured so we are taking the lead right which is really good and you gotta remember we're only t4 here so we're trying to take advantage of the speed we are since we are t4 players we're technically faster on the battlefield and we're able just to quickly swarm down these buildings and hopefully capture them so we get extra more score per minute and that is the aim of this game i'm not gonna lie we're gonna try and keep up with it but this is basically the first 10 minutes now of the game mode so what we're gonna do is basically showcase what happens a little bit later on as you can see we're just showcasing that seal of fawns there is a very important seal that seal stops us from basically going in and just stealing that tree of healing so we have to walk all the way around and it does allow as you can see ei EIS to use flying units really well in that zone to try and poke us down. So that's where we see my flying units starting to basically try and poke these guys away, which is really cool to see. Um, so then what we're going to do again, we're going to move forward. So I hope you've enjoyed the video so far. You can see 10 minutes in the line, we are taking the lead and we are running pretty strong at the moment. But if you're wondering what our game plan is at the moment, it is just to try and capture what we can and just have a bit of fun. So it is the first time we're playing this and obviously it's the first time we're ever going to basically have a chance of experiencing and learning from it, which is very important here. So... Here's a little battle that is showcasing that I'm going to just let you guys see. And a really cool feature that is showcased here during the fight is the behemoth system. So during the behemoths, if you've noticed, every five minutes, not every five minutes, but on the 10 minute mark, you're going to be able to summon this in five minutes. As you can see, it's a little timer so you can watch it. So when that timer ends, the Beastmaster is basically able to summon and stuff. So you can summon that, use the Behemoth around. You're going to get another Behemoth at the 30 minute mark, which we're going to showcase. And then at the 45th minute mark, we also gain another Behemoth. One thing though you might notice though, we don't have a Beastmaster currently for some reason in this um, Roots of War. So we do have a massive disadvantage here. So if the Alliance we're against does have a Beastmaster, which we might see later down the line, then it is going to be a major, major problem. So let's move on into the future and see how things go. Welcome back. We're at that 20 minute mark and you can see things are getting close. We've got a massive open field combat here with EIS that I'm going to shout cast over and give you guys a little bit of insight since this was a really fun atmosphere as well because some of the players we are fighting, which we got information of afterwards in the live stream chat, was they were T5, right? So there was quite a few T5 players in this alliance compared to us, which had zero. But you can see, even at 20 minutes, we are still winning. We have got a decent score at the moment. And at the moment, at the this is where the turning point for me on the map is the problem. So if you look at the map during this combat phase, you'll notice there's a lot more blue structures starting to occur. And we need to get back on top of things as an alliance, capturing these buildings so we can get that score per minute. Otherwise, what's gonna happen is EIS is gonna overtake us. So right here, you can see I'm using all my marchers and we are focusing down the same units as the uh, as our allies. I'm shout casting this in a Discord chat. So we're trying to go down on the frenzy 
King Gully in a second once we've finished killing down these major guys. So once he's getting focused down, I'm moving into position, getting ready to go and melt this player. But we can see now we're in range of the archers. So immediately for me, I prioritize the archers. I know I'm in range to kill them. So I'm going to kill those and ignore this infantry march here. And once we do that, you can see we start to swarm the t the building and once we swarm the building we gain capture of it you can see the two minute timer rocking there and my troops are getting very very low here in this fight since there's loads of units coming back out from the eis area you can see we're just outside of the gear of their main zone where this fight is occurring at the very top of the map so we are doing a very aggressive push here trying to take control of all of this zone so here we're at 37 minutes, 11,000.3 to 8.3. So we still have that 3,000 point lead here. And that is honestly a really good showcase, even with our delay in of nearly five minutes, missing out that beginning opening push, right? So let's see, obviously, how this progresses, this fight. This is one where we are going to eventually die out here, but we are doing our best to use our artifacts. You can see we're using Phoenix Eye on the marches there on the top right corner just to make sure these guys don't just get free damage off without getting punished at least. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to punish those guys out of position. Here's a massive Shadow Blaze that everyone just walks into here by myself. And we can see, oh no, we need to heal. So that's what we're going to start doing. Start doing the healing. We've got a bunch of resource saved up for this as well as using the Elixir healing system which we're doing right now. So you can see I'm just trying to get it nicely set up. Got that heals going. Now we're going to go refresh all of our troops and go again. So this is again at the 36 minute mark. So I hope you've enjoyed so far the highlights of the video. Again, if you want to check out the full one hour combat, it will be uploaded later on today. So check that video out. If you want to watch the full commentary and just even skip through at the 10, 20, 34 and 50 minute marks, for example. So with all that said, I hope you've enjoyed it. We're going to keep going through. We're going to skip forward in time and make sure you guys don't get bored with just watching nothing happening on screen screen welcome back we're at almost the 30 minute mark and this is the turning point which is where everything starts to get a bit hectic in even the chat where people start going a little bit more quiet and everything is loosey goosey as you can imagine everyone's trying to just do what they can what they think is the best at the moment with whatever troops they've got left as you can see with t4 we are pretty healthy still with the amount of troops we've got through the healing but EIS showcasing their absolute brutal strength in the open field. Honestly, with that little bit of extra T5 presence in there, it is so hard when we have just T4, even when they've got a thing between five and six in, you know, just extra marches as T5. It's so much stats to try and burn through to kill the T4 players. And it's just too much to ask for when we're looking at our players. And you can see that now on the map, right? Everything looks blue. And this is what generally happens when the Strong Alliance or the Alliance that has the game plan in place is already taking advantage of it, right? So we can see the 30 minute mark is about to occur. And that's when I believe the next behemoth should be able to be summoned. So what we're doing here is basically now, if you can imagine, you can think, okay, we might get, we're going to lose this game. This is in our, our head. We can try and win it still, but... It's confident to say we might lose this. And the way we're going to combat this is through score. Remember, you can still get score through killing. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use our five marches and we're going to try and get into as much combat as, as we can. And by doing so, it's going to allow us to hit that 10,000 individual score, which is so important because even if you lose, guys, that's five. That's right, five generation two tokens. So you can upgrade your heroes. And again, if you did win, it goes all the way up to the 10 mark. So we still need to make sure we can get that. And showcasing it here throughout the video when we go towards the end, you're gonna see how much score we get as a T4 player. And it wasn't even that hard, I believe, to get it. And we wasn't even playing optimally where you can get more points by garrisoning buildings and just holding buildings, for example, a really good strategy there. 
But you can see on screen, the four minute timer for the Behemoth is up. So you can summon now the Hydra in the Roots of War. So you can plan all of this in your strategies in the future. If you're looking at Roots of War on the first little bits of gameplay and how it works, it's very, very similar to Ark of Osiris, guys. If you play the Ark of Osiris, you should feel at home. The only thing you have as well is the summoning of the Behemoth during those different time intervals. So, we're going to just finish watching out my PvP footage here. We were doing a really good job in this, and now we can see this guy for some reason trying to push into us. So, we use our infantry to target him down. We've got our Shadow Blades. We're going to rock it over, burn through now this nasty AoE on all four targets. They're hitting over 9,000 artifact damage, and we're going to target down the archers first we're going to try and do the best damage we can because for us if we're targeting the cavalry we're not going to get that much advantage because again cavalry have the unit advantage over marksmen so we want to try and use it either in a marksman versus marksman trade so it's neutral or if we can see a mage we're going to try and focus a mage player to get them down right so that's why you saw a quick switch focus onto it from the cavalry instantly back onto that marksman unit that did get all the way down to the red zone which was a t5 player sadly enough so with all that said we're gonna fast forward it in time again towards near the end of the video on the whole roots of war so i hope you've enjoyed the highlights of it again just remember you can check the full gameplay out later on on today welcome back to the final bit of gameplay i'm going to showcase before the final rewards that I was able to get in the roots of war so here is honestly if you want action 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 this roots of war was so fun to play in because it was just us t4 players basically trying to fight against all the t5 and t4 and you can see here we actually put up a really good fight even though eventually as you can imagine the t5 do win in the battle of attrition but we are putting up a really good fight with ourselves plus all the TM members, you can see everyone putting in all the AOE damage with mages here, trying to put as much pressure on. And you can even see that Syndrome player there, which was a T5, getting absolutely shredded and almost getting murdered there. So now we're just getting out our last bit of marksman. You can see we're pulling out big boys and see what we're going to be able to do with our final 20 minutes and hopefully getting that score. At the moment, we do have. 12,000 scores. We've already passed the 10,000 mark and I'm going to let you guys wait and see till the end on our final score on what we're able to get because we are going to get those juicy rewards which is what we always want to aim for. So here we are rocking the Nico and Frega. I'm just going to use one match and you see 257.5k match out now. So we're seeing how much damage this thing does with T4. We've got Shadow Blades ready to fling as well. So you're going to see my Shadow Blades come out here in a second dealing some absurd AoE damage here. To everyone, 10.9 thousand damage that hit on some of those members. So, really like it. And now we're going to focus down this little flank line that are on our right side. We have an Atheist and a, as you can see, Emery's and Fear there being piloted. And we are instantly melting that Atheist because we can see mages. We're going to kill mages. We just instantly see and just aim. So it's one of those things we get naturally accustomed to. And here we can see, I'm a bit annoyed. I was like, why is it slept, not slept in my Valen and it's slept in Eliana? But it is what it is. So we've got our two main DPS marchers out now. So this is what I run as the best of the best currently for myself. This is a Liliana Valen march and then a Nico and a... Frega, and that's because my Frega is at 5351. Uh, if I could and I had a Canara at 5551, five, five, I probably would be running Canara and Frega instead. I think that would have been a lot better in this scenario right now. But you can see the Nico has been putting in a ton of work. He's been getting focused down. He's been doing single target damage. And now I'm going to use my Cavalry just to try and cause problems here. Not to get mainly kills. But you can see I'm trying to just blink over people and just get near 
all peel basically so they can't just randomly walk around and flank for free they have to at least walk through my units and delay that small push but you can see EIS already refreshed all of their troops already coming back at us with masses amount of field presence here and this is honestly why people love Roots of War because it allows you to experience the open field combat system in the game without worry right you don't have to worry about your hospitals filling up you don't have to really worry about any sort of bad parts everyone runs on the same because you're all at level 16 max talent so you can run what you want it's all about either your investment and obviously the skills you have so really do enjoy this game mode so far from what we've been able to do you can see me just trying to heal a little bit more before we go in our two marches pumping in the work again Lydia sat on the ramp trying to do a bit of AOE damage while my Madeline at Nika is sat there being the frontline tank for the marches you can see I've still got a ton of archers so we are rocking the archers right now before we finish things up because again for me, I've been using archers so much and Wyvern Riders has allowed me to basically use so much of the archer marches and different arch pairings and get more and more, you know, data and intel and feel for what I think is a better march when you start using it in the open field presence. And that's why we're going to be doing a new tier list soon. So that's a little teaser for you guys who've been watching all the way through the video so far. So this is going to be the last little push we're going to showcase now with my final march. Nico going in as hard as he can. We're going to try and focus what we can as the T4 player. So we can see the targeting Frenzy King Devil. So we're going to do the same. We're going to try and put that physical defense reduction, which we do. And now you can see him getting absolutely melted. So now we're targeting the next target. We're choosing a really nice one. So we're going to go for, again, Mimo here. And we're going to just try it and melt this. But I think this Mimo was a T5 player until, you know, we realize, wait, I'm taking a lot of counter attack damage here. I don't like this. So I basically switch off that target really really fast there so we go on to Budweiser instead because Budweiser is just a cavalry unit even though he has the unit advantage we still do a ton of damage to him because he's not targeting us and right there you can see a little sneak peek over 15,000 scores so far in the video so you can see it but Especially with T4, you can definitely hit over 10,000, especially if you're just trying to do open field combat like I am, we've hit that score, right? So if we was able to have more of a team, and this is what we're going to finish the video upon, if we had more of a team strategy or better team planning so we could have, you know, better garrison knowledge so we know who was the garrison leaders who could have been rally leaders and stuff like that it might obviously give you a better chance at winning right so that is one big tip for you guys when you can play this game mode another big tip is always as you can imagine we didn't have one because we didn't realize that you needed one uh, or we didn't realize one of our officers wasn't the beast master should we say but you're not able to summon beasts if you don't have a Beastmaster. So you need to make sure one of your officers or one of your players is counted as the Beastmaster. Because right now, this is the big mark, as you can see. At the final 10 minutes and 15 minute mark, you're going to be able to summon the Flame Dragon. And this Flame Dragon does absolutely destructive damage. This thing does so much damage on the open field, it's actually unfair especially if you've got t4 you're gonna see this thing randomly appear now and watch how quick my march is full health here by the way as you can see and in a moment they're gonna just disappear they're gonna you're just gonna see the health just drop there's there's one already my lilia has already gone down to 10 percent my nico has already dropped down 20 percent hp stats i'm like what is this thing and now the big skill comes It's like we're fighting the raid again. Oh! <laughs> so yeah, if you can summon the flame dragon and use the flame dragon, honestly, this is a massive advantage in the open field. And you can see the Beastmaster isn't playing. He's not in the game. He's not actually selected for some reason. He's not part of the team. So we don't have one. And this is the, the crutch of it all. So I hope you've enjoyed today's highlights of it. You can watch the 
full one hour, like I've said throughout the video, just smash like, comment and subscribe and then you'll be able to see when that video goes live a little bit later on. And that video again is the full one hour so you can, and I'm gonna just timestamp it with like 10 minutes, 20, 30, 40, 50 so you can see obviously that and you can just watch it in the time t um, intervals you wanna watch it in. But there is so much open field here and it's just gonna be the raw footage so you're gonna be able to hear how I was during the live stream and the Discord chat in that whole manner. So I hope you enjoy that video and I hope you enjoyed today's highlights on the Roots of War. With all that said, thank you for watching, thank you for supporting the channel and stay safe, stay sneaky and peace out everyone.